Superdome. 2002, Super Bowl 36. The Super Bowl champion New England Patriots personified all that was best about sports. Team before individual. Hard work and perseverance. Adversity overcome. In 2001, when the Patriots won the Super Bowl, they were Cinderella. And everybody couldn't believe what a wonderful testimony to team they were, and everybody wanted to celebrate them. But over the course of time, any team that wins over a consistent basis, that is consistently in your face, eventually people are going to start to get tired of you. Through three NFL championships, the winning profile remained the same. But a team revered for doing things the right way was now depicted as secretive, mysterious, and shadowy. We didn't change at all as a team, our philosophy, how we approach games, how we approach the season. But what did change was that now everyone wanted to know what we were doing and how we were doing it. And when you, you know, we really didn't give them access to that as players or as coaches. I think that people started coming up with their own reasons as to why we were winning, why we were successful. And usually those weren't good reasons. The perception had changed quite a bit. We were always viewed as the bad guys, which were, was basically fine for us because our mentality was always is 53 guys and coaches against the world. Because that's what kept us motivated, us being a team. And that was our whole mantra is to be a team. One, two, three, defense. Go. And here come the Patriots out on the field in mass. The Patriots' fortress mentality contrasted sharply with that of Tony Dungy's Indianapolis Colts. Theirs was a competition distinctly framed. There were no shades of gray. Around here, it's good versus evil. It's Tony Dungy and all that is right with the world and, uh, you know, the evil, the evil hoodie, uh, Bill Belichick and everything that's wrong, uh, wrong, with, uh, wrong with football. In the realm of the quarterbacks, it absolutely fits along the lines of winner, stat guy, championships, MVPs. The Patriots were old school, tough guys who sacrificed. The Colts of the new decade best reflected the continuing evolution of the NFL game, a big play offense that entertained and excited. That perception did play into it, that here was New England who really was a, a team they had um, blue-collar guys. They didn't have a lot of highly publicized guys. They had this persona that they were 60 minutes of tough guys in a unit. And then you had the perception of us being, hey, you've got these talented offensive weapons, and it's going to be this offensive firepower against this tough blue-collar team. That was the league's golden team, the guys in white, the good guys, you know, and we were the underdogs, the bad boys. You know, we had guys like Rodney who didn't care much about media stuff. We just cared about going out, blackening your eye and putting a hurt on you. In 2003 and 2004, the Colts and Patriots played four times, twice in the playoffs. The Patriots won all four games. Good afternoon, everyone. From Snowy Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, it's the AFC Championship. Everybody around Indianapolis thought that that 2003 team was the best team that they had and that that was going to be the Super Bowl team. They just absolutely stomped Kansas City and Denver, and everybody thought it's the unstoppable force. Peyton Manning, there, he's at the top of his game. There's no way New England could slow these guys down. Touchdown! I don't think I've ever played any better. And I would challenge any other player to say they had two games better than the, than the two I played in against the Broncos and the Chiefs. We didn't punt. We were hot on offense, and I was hot. I mean, guys looked wide open to me. The ball is coming off, and I'm seeing things. I'm going, man, I, mean, I just, well, we got it. I got it. I'm hot, and it's, this is fun. I'm on the table watching them kick Denver's butt, getting a massage. I'm, I'm looking at the game, and I'm saying, how in the heck are we going to stop this guy? You probably knew you weren't going to be to have one of these perfect passing days 
in the type of weather we were going to have in Foxborough, but certainly didn't foresee the kind of day that was coming. If you watched the game on TV, you saw that it was inclement weather. If you were actually there, you thought you had to walk into this wintry hell. It was almost like Bill Belichick had, you know, ordered this weather. Four interceptions of Peyton Manning today. Didn't throw it well, didn't make good decisions. I really felt responsible for the reason that we didn't win that game. Teddy Bruschi made the tackle, and Bruschi ripped it right out of his hands, and the Patriots have the football. We felt we were tougher. That's something that we, we really took pride in, was that, that we were the tougher team. We like to get dirty, you know, when we, when we got them here in our stadium. I think this is what they were looking for. They ain't got it. They ain't got it. They ain't got it was symbolic of they don't understand. They don't understand what they have to do to be champions. They don't understand what they have to go through to be champions. And I just took it from them, and that proved to me that they ain't got it. That grated on us because that was the perception that we were more talented and they were smarter and better prepared and tougher in, in the clutch. They pretty much owned us, you know, four games in a row. Two years in a row they beat us in the playoff game, sending us home, and, and we really hated those guys. Uh, I'm not going to go hatred, but it, it built that uh, dislike because, you know, that team stops you from getting to where you want to get to. They hadn't gotten over that mental aspect of, can you beat the Patriots? They can beat everyone else, but can you beat the Patriots? Can you beat them in bad weather? I think those years, if they had played, if they had home field advantage, they probably would have gotten to, to the Super Bowl. That opportunity came in 2006 in the AFC Championship game. The setting was the RCA Dome and its climate-controlled fast track. The Colts had won the last two regular season games, both in Foxborough, neither in poor weather. Manning threw for more than 300 yards in each victory. What a catch by Marvin Harrison! In the 2006 win, the defense intercepted four Tom Brady passes. Got by the Colts, and the Colts have the ball game! Suddenly, Bill Belichick didn't loom as this, you know, overarching mad genius. Now it was time to purge the playoff demons. I said, if we're ever going to go to the Super Bowl, we're going to have to beat the Patriots. The dream matchup for us was to play the Patriots, and we got what we wanted. Nothing like your nemesis in the AFC Championship game again. I think almost the guys set it up that way. You know, if you guys wanted to get where you wanted to go, you got to beat New England. I mean, you just felt that energy. And, uh, and you, you understood that this is a huge game. You're one game away from the Super Bowl. This was our time. We had, we had, we had the, everything lined up where it was our opportunity to seize. Really felt like this was our time. Our night, our team, baby. This is what we do. Defensive line dominating. Up front block. Knock them out. Sticking them out on three. One, two, three. Sticking them out. out. We never had a home AFC Championship game. This is the first time for our fans to really experience what it felt like a game leading into the Super Bowl. Just the electricity that you felt stepping into that stadium. I mean, our, our fans was jacked. Colts fanatics were especially eager to let the visiting Patriots know they were in hostile territory. One of the biggest feelings of electricity that I felt from an away stadium, you know, out from those fans in that dome, the noise that they produced, the energy of the Colts players, the way they were feeding off of it. Ain't nothing left after the day, baby. Ain't nothing left after the day, baby. It's either win or go home. You already know. That's what you want. Chance to go to the Super Bowl, defend our home turf. I think we got it. Big plays, make big plays and big games. You already know how we do out here. We're at this moment. We're going to seize this moment, and we're going to get to the Super Bowl. And what better place to do it is at home versus the Patriots. We I mean, can't script it any better than that. We really felt like we could win that game, and I think, really, between the coaching staff and the 53 players, those are the only people that probably believed in us, you know? And uh, it was just one of those things where uh, you, you couldn't feel any better about a game, even though everything around you said no. Buying into it. Huh? And they're buying into oh, they're it. They're loving it right now. 
<laughs> the thing about Indianapolis is the people are wonderful and, and they're very friendly. You know, there's no edge to them. They're giving Heartland people, but when you get the New England Patriots on the field in their white uniforms and all that they represent and all the good times they deprived you of having, you can smell the need for blood from that fan base. It's like they couldn't conceive of the possibility that Indy might lose this game. If they didn't win this one, then I think you would just say, all right, we give up, we give up, we can't beat these guys. One guy the Colts wouldn't have to worry about was hundreds of miles away, limited to witnessing the game from his living room. Unfortunately, I had suffered um, an MCL injury, so I was at home in Attleboro um, on my couch watching, watching TV with a buddy of mine. And um, very frustrating, but very exciting. Let's take the hat to them. This is where the game is won and lost at. I've learned in the NFL that nobody really owes you anything. These guys are not going to let us win this game because they feel like, hey, the Colts have had enough heartbreak. You know, we're going to let them win. I mean, especially the New England Patriots. I mean, it's like somebody said, you know, aren't you glad you're playing the Patriots at home? I mean, isn't this the way it should be? I'm like, no, I'm really not. I mean, I think I would like to have played. Oakland or somebody, the team, I think they had the worst record in football that year. That would have been a fine with me. Get here tight. Play hard, play smart, play together, all right? Win on three, one, two, three, win. The winner today goes to Miami in two weeks to meet the Chicago Bears, the NFC champions in Super Bowl 41. All right, we're set to go. And Vinatieri moves into the football, and it's end over end. Coming down and returnable to Ellis Hobbs at the 6. Up the middle to the 10, the 15, to the 20. And across the 20 to about the 24-yard line before he is thrown down by Marlon Jackson. And so the Patriots come onto the field for their first offensive series. The crowd, as you can hear, is in a frenzy. This whole city has been in a frenzy all weekend. First and 10 at their own 25. Brady on first down play action. Fires near side. Caught across the 30. Breaking to tackle at the 35-40. Up the sideline and out of bounds on the near side at the 43-yard line goes Rache Caldwell. Oh, a nice job by Caldwell that time as he faked out Nick Harper. And look at the yard he picked up by pulling off that good fake. First down handoff to Lawrence Moroni trying to go to the left side. He's going to lose yardage. Gets nailed at the 41-yard line. In the playoffs, the Colts defensively are giving up only 63 yards rushing, 121 passing, and seven points a game. Second down and 12 for the Patriots at their own 41. Brady in a shotgun. Brady calling signals on the left wing is Watson. Direct snap inside handoff. Kevin Falk shoots it up the middle to the 40 and gets across to about the 45-yard line. It'll bring up third down and eight for the Patriots from their own 45. Brady awaiting the shotgun snap. Inside handoff again. Kevin Falk shoots it across the 50-yard line, driving ahead and gets it down to the 47-yard line. Kevin Falk in a first down. He uh, got a lot of confidence in that play, and with the production that it got, they have every reason to feel uh, it's short. Is it? An inch. It is. You're right. They're going to go for it. Yeah. A lot of times on the fourth down, comes up in a big game, the coach will, you know, as a vote of confidence to the team, allow us to go for it, especially if it's in that fringe area between punting and kicking a field goal. You know, it's just one of those plays that, you buck up and say, you know, it's one yard. Let's get this. If we do, it could be a big play. In motion to the right comes Thomas. The give comes to the right side. Breaking it for first end of the 40. 35-30. 25-20. Right sideline and out of bounds on the near side. Goes Corey Dillon. Oh, boy. I think about eight men in the box. And they ran the slant. And it just opened up for Corey Dillon. And he had nothing to do but run. The Colts, I'm sure, were expecting Brady to quarterback sneak. I know one of the long runs that uh, Corey Dillon had is kind of was a uh, you know a miscue with a lot with the alignment of our defense. You know they came out in, in that formation where we thought they were going to do one thing and they ran a different play and gassed us for I think mean, about a 50 yard run. Again, that's what happens if you don't stop them. They will break it outside and Antoine Bethea made a great play holding it inside a 35 yard run. Evans, the fullback, tailback is Lawrence Maroney. 
Three tight ends out there for the Patriots on first down. Handoff comes to Maroney, turning it wide to the left. Cuts inside the 10, inside the 5, and down to the three-yard line. Goes Lawrence Maroney, the Patriot rookie running back. So the Patriots are running right, and they're running left, and they are running the football very well. Maroney's next carry was the first sign that this championship game would be anything but ordinary. Brady sends Thomas in motion from left to right. Handoff comes to the right. Maroney, he fumbled the football. Battle for it down inside the three. Ball in the end zone. And what do we have? Oh, uh, Logan Matthews Touchdown. recovered it. Touchdown, Patriots. The ball was fumbled by Lawrence Maroney. It was bouncing into the end zone. Damn. I saw the ball come loose. Uh, it was bouncing around. I actually thought we had it for a while. And again, we're seeing the replay on Maroney's fumble. He never got the handoff. That ball was bouncing around. I guess two of our guys jumped on the ball and squared out right into the end zone. Offensive lineman from the Patriots hops on it, touchdown. If you watch the play when Logan ended up scoring his touchdown, and as a lineman, that doesn't happen ever. And for a guy like Logan, when the ball came flying out, squirting around, and he'd gotten up after cutting a guy and just happened to be in the right place at the right time, Unfortunately for Copen, who had dove at the same time, I think Logan's uh, body mass took over, and, and he ended up getting the touchdown. And, and then, you know, when a fat guy scores, all hell breaks loose. I mean, forget about what's happening in the game and everything else. We're going to go celebrate and have a good time. We got to do a good job of taking care of the, the running back. Tackle him, rip the ball out. You can't have any garbage yardage. No garbage yardage, okay? Pick your energy level up. Pick it up. Pick it up. You got a pretty good barometer on the speed of the game, and you got. It's not different than what we practice, fellas. Good looking. They're gonna play what they play. They've been playing pretty well for the last month. They're gonna play what they play on me. Despite the bizarre goal line mishap. The fans were confident the league leader in touchdown passes would respond in his usual fashion. Peyton looks to his right. He's got a five-man front, New England does, against him. Colts start at their own 20. Peyton fakes to a die, drops, sets up, getting away. Peyton fires to the out route, caught by Marvin Harrison, steps out of bounds to the 28. And Peyton did a great job getting away from the blitz. Gain of eight, second and two, Colts. And they'll give the ball to Adaya. Joseph puts his head down, first down and more. 35 to the 36-yard line, brought down by Eric Alexander, but not before he picked up a first down at the Colts 36. New England leads 7-0. Snap to Peyton. Fires the quick out, caught by Reggie. 40, 45, out to the 49. He was one block away from going all the way. Now uh, the safety stayed back that time. They're playing what they call a four deep. And again, Reggie, once he caught it, had 10 yards until he got to the safeties. In a series that would eat up nearly the rest of the first quarter, Manning found success underneath, completing six short passes. But when the Colts decided to go deep, the Patriots were more than ready to defend their turf. Manning takes the snap, fakes to a die. Good block by uh, Tar Glenn. Throw to Reggie Wayne. Knockdown. Great defensive play by Ellis Hobbs. At the beginning of the route, you see that I'm kind of out leveraged, and I have to do a, a speed turn to get out of there. Luckily, uh, Peyton put enough air on the ball to where I could get a hand on it. I actually got my good hand on it because I had a, a broken wrist at the time with a cast on the left hand. The toughest throw is to the outside or to the sideline, but if you're playing outside technique, and then like Reggie Wayne did, he gave him a fake to the out, and he went and he ran toward the goalpost inside deep. It's bad technique if you look at it, but what a tremendous play with his makeup speed and his athletic ability. The play by Hobbs and the self-inflicted wound would keep the Colts out of the end zone. We go down, we got a good drive, we get a holding penalty, get a third and 22 or something on our own 40. I call a run play, get us in the field goal range to get us the field goal. He said, all right, that was a good drive. The holding penalty cost us a touchdown, but we got three. We're moving the ball, we're doing okay. Let's see what goes. The snap, the ball is down. Adams' kick is on the way. It looks good. It is perfect. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Timeout on the field with a score. The Patriots 7, the Colts 3. New England's first scoring drive had consisted of seven running plays 
and just one pass. They would continue to stay on the ground at the beginning of the second quarter. We didn't sense that New England would come in and say, hey, we're going to run the ball, run the clock. We'd had a lot of teams that tried to play us that way, slow the game down. And, um, you know, we had scored so many points on them the last two games, over 30 both times. I just felt they're going to come in and try to outscore us. They're going to try to get the lead early and force us into mistakes. So we felt we had to get after Brady, and that backfired on us a little bit. Ready? The 20! Draw plays from shotgun formation gashed the Colts whose aggressive pursuit became a liability. Our defense is a one-gap oriented defense. Every man is responsible for one gap. If you do your job and the next man does his, the defense works. If for some reason a guy fails, he creates a seam in the defense, and then the offense can find that seam, and they can get the ball moving. 76 yards and 12 carries already. That's way too much. Six yards a carry. They haven't stopped the running play of any significance yet. Listen, we can't make those mistakes, all right? Just line up, let's get, get the call, and make sure we're in the same thing, all right? It was kind of amazing to see how much they ran the ball in the first half. But well, we, we understood that, and we understood, all right, well, we're going to wait this thing out because eventually they're going to get back to being who they are. Brady did throw more often in this series. But most of the calls were quick passes or dump offs into the flat that continued to neutralize the Colts front four. It would be a similar pass play that made the difference when New England decided to roll the dice again on another fourth down call. So the Patriots are gonna go for it. Fourth and six, a huge play here. They're very good on fourth downs. Lots of opportunity. The best in the league. In motion, left to right, Troy Brown. Direct snap to Brady. Stands in the pocket, steps up, fires down the field, caught. Troy Brown, 20, 15, 10, inside the 10 of the six-yard line. First and goal to go. I think Troy Brown came down in motion and ran across the rock. That was definitely a huge play for him. Uh, that definitely something I thought we, we should have stopped. Could have covered it a lot, lot better. The Colts came with the blitz that time. They came with two men. Sanders was one of them. And again, he just ran a crossing route to Troy Brown. He was able to get free. First and goal at the seven, and now the Colts are in a lot of trouble. Well, the spread formation, they had the slot man on Troy. Troy came uh, crossing uh, right behind him. Jason David couldn't keep up with him. Perfect pass, perfect run after. On the right wing is Graham, left wing Watson. It is a draw to Corey Dillon. Coming to the left, he's got a five-yard line. He's standing up into the end zone. Touchdown, Corey Dillon. And the Patriots are right now playing very, very well. Talking about right, maybe it's a little support. Way to go, baby. Way to go. Let's go. Deep in the red area, um, where if you're going to call a draw, it's either going to be really good or it's going to be really bad. And fortunately for us, they were blitzing us at that point. You kind of just take the guys where they want to go. Corey made a great read, you know, ran where they weren't and was able to really just walk into the end zone. And the Colts left it on the practice field. No question about it. They are not here tonight, and New England is cruising. I guess what had given me confidence was the fact that we had been able to put up 40 points on these guys before. So that's what I kept pointing out to the team. I just had this belief that, that with everything we had talked about before the game, all that energy, all the anticipation, that, that it was our time. Come on, Dallas. Get going, man. He's got a lot of time left. Let's just get back in this. Let's score some points. Let's go. And now the pressure mounts on Peyton Manning and the offense. This drive is huge. This may be the biggest drive of the playoffs for the Colts because they don't want to give it right back to a red-hot New England team. At that point in Peyton's career, we realized his intelligence had grown. Uh, he was a very smart player. It was a lot tougher at times to get in his head than it was earlier in his career, so he'd figure out things very quickly. So we wanted to emphasize disguise. Show him one thing, play another. Play one thing, then show him another. Back to throw, fires near side. Intercepted, left side. Asante Samuel, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Asante Samuel. He read that route perfectly. Asante Samuel, I mean, that was a work of art. I mean, if you're ever thinking about disguising the coverage, you look at that film, and it was perfect. 
It looked like Asante Samuel was man-to-man -man coverage, and at the last minute, Artrell Hawkins run from the middle, he goes over top, and he covers Asante Samuel with his great instincts and his ball-hawking skills. He intercepts the ball, he takes it to the house, changes the game. You can hold it long enough and then start rotating as the ball snap. Uh, I don't care who you are. We're talking about a Peyton Manning and in, in the Indianapolis Colts. That's hard to read on the fly as far as, the, you know, you might have two, three seconds to get that ball off and you got that pressure on you. I take pride in not being fooled out there by a defense that you know, most of my mistakes are either throws that got away from me or just a, a great play by a defense. But, you know, rarely do I feel like I'm fooled by what a defense does. And so right then I was thinking, I think they might have fooled me. So now it's 21 to 3, and I'm going, is this, this is supposed to be our time, though, right? This, we need this to be our time, and our time is running out. Peyton's sixth interception of the playoffs. This one very costly as Asante Samuel takes it to the house, and the Colts are really in hot water now. Well, the Colts' starting field position is their own 17, and they trail the Patriots 21 to 3. And the crowd here at the Dome, which was in a frenzy at the start of the game, is a bit stunned right now. I don't understand on the on the, the second down play why he didn't just come behind him. I, I played over with those called the scoops. So and you're just thinking to yourself, man. I mean, everything is going wrong for us right now. I remember looking at the guys and. We're all, we're all kind of in a semi-huddle on the sideline, and we're all looking at each other, and every guy is just going, all we got to do is get one score. Field goal or touchdown, we're back in this game, and we can make something happen. The only player who made something happen was a hometown kid in a Patriots jersey. Manning awaiting the shotgun snap, and he's got it. Drop straight back, looking left, looking left. Here's a hit, he's sacked! Back at the five-yard line by Roosevelt Golden, the Indianapolis native who used to sell cotton candy here in the Indianapolis Hoosier Dome. And today, he has just sacked Peyton Manning in here. In their home stadium, they're unable to deal with the pass rush of the Patriots, and they're taking sacks. So then it's starting to look like, okay, it's not just a time element here. It's not just a couple of mistakes. It's a total breakdown. Yeah, here we go. Come on. You gotta take the game over, man. Yep. Now let's go. Let's go. Let's go. New England with the ball at the Colts 48. They lead 21 to 3. We have 7.33 to play in the half. And uh, the Colts have really got their work cut out for them. It's got to start here. Got to get them off the field. That didn't seem likely as Brady continued to confuse the Colts with a mixture of play calls. But just when the Patriots appeared to be on their way to another score, Indianapolis got its first break of the game. Third down and six. Pressure coming. Brady dumps it out in the flat. It is caught. First down. A flag goes in. Maybe it's a pick play with two Might receivers on the right side. It was offensive pass interference, it appears. Up until that point, we haven't got a break. We saw a flag on the ground, and initially you're thinking, oh, boy, first down, flag on the play. You know, they're going to get another 10 yards. But it was against them, I think, an offensive pass interference, and we drove them back. Brackett and the rest of the defense were finally in a favorable down and distant situation, earning Dwight Freeney a belated Christmas gift. Snap, he drops back. Brady throws the throw. Steps up and goes down at the 50. They get him off the field, and there's no chance for a field goal from here. You know, I went up the field and knew it was a pass, and, you know, I cut the corner, um, and, and I looked. And Brady was sitting there right in front of me. And I remember him just going down like the field position, you know, falling down. Nowhere to go. Nice job collapsing it. He hit the deck, didn't he? He hit the deck. Yes, he saw me. A face full of turf also awaited Manning on the Colts next series. After two disastrous plays, the home team desperately needed to convert on third down. Otherwise, the game, for all intents and purposes, 
would be over. This looks real bad because this could get out of hand fast. And so now you're thinking, you know, they're going to get a short field. They can go up 28 to 3. I mean, we're probably hard, probably not going to come back from 21 and 3. There's no way we can come back from 28 to 3. Third down, baby. Come on, D. Manning on third down at his own 12, takes the snap, sets up, looks, 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 he throws, caught by Reggie Wayne, first down, gets to the 25 and out to the 30, first down. That is one that most people won't remember, but that was the big, well, second biggest play of the game, because if we don't get that first down and we have to punt backed up, there's a good chance it's 24-3 at halftime at the very least, and now you are feeling bad. Third and 10, you're hearing boos, people are ready to just jump ship, and he hits Reggie Wayne with that pass, and it opened the door ever so slightly. The third down conversion ignited a patented Peyton Manning two-minute drill that breathed new life into the Colts' championship hopes. This is the one thing that the Patriots really wanted to avoid, and that was let the Colts build up a head of steam at the end of the first half. You can see it in Peyton's eyes. When he figures out that he cracked the code, and he figured out how the defense is playing him, and he knows exactly what plays to go to. I mean, you saw that in his eyes, that he knew exactly how to beat these guys. Had a good drive down there, had some momentum, really kind of picked the tempo up. Even with the no huddle, we were a little bit more upbeat. Third down and 10, Peyton takes the snap. Steps up, steps up, throws underneath. Caught by Dominic Rose, first down. Got it to the 18 of New England. 42 seconds left in the half. What a catch by Dominic Rose. And the receivers are coming up with the catch. And Dominic Rose made a catch and took the hit right there. I mean, you know, those are the kind of things that separate the men from the boys. That was the most significant time in the game because they took over the ball and they drove the ball all the way down. They didn't get into the end zone. Manning sets up. Here comes the pressure. Throws to the back of the end zone. Oh, Dallas couldn't oh, catch it. Incomplete. Normally, that's a victory for the defense. It wasn't a victory for the defense. They kicked the field goal. You look at it as three points, but I looked at it, it was the drive that really changed the game because they made some good throws. They advanced the ball pretty well down the field. It gave them the confidence going into the locker room, knowing that, you know what, we're going to open it up for them. We're going to run the ball. We're going to pass the ball. They hit some tight ends in the second half, changed the whole game. 15 points, 30 minutes to play. You never, never know in this game. I remember going in the locker room and everybody saying, this game isn't over. This is National Football League's the AFC Championship. Anything could happen. And so we have come to the half with a score at the half. The New England Patriots 21. The Indianapolis Colts 6. We had a pretty good lead. At that point, you're thinking, you know what? It kind of settles in. You know, we go out there and play another half like this. We're going to go to the big game. There's 30 minutes of football to be played. A couple of touchdowns, and you can get right back in this game. If we score with the first drive, we're only down one score. So we, we won't have to play desperate in the second half. You hate to put all the pressure on that one drive, because it, what if you don't score on that first drive? But sure enough, we did. We had a good drive. It was a 14-play drive that featured eight runs and six passes. Peyton again going with a uh, quick no huddle. First and 10 Colts. Manning under center. Here comes Colvin. The handoff is to Dominic Rhodes. He's got a hole 40, 45, out almost to the 47-yard line. First and 10 Colts at the Northern 38. Manning on first down. We'll give it to Rhodes off the right side. He's got running room. Bounces across the 35, down to about the 33. Good hole again by that offensive line. Bruschi again blitzed that time. They blocked him to the inside, and Rhodes went outside of him. Big play. Good play for six yards. What I liked about the way they operated on that drive is that they played it like it was 0-0 instead of 21-6. They did not panic, and they were very workmanlike. They kept giving the ball to a die in Rhodes, and they went right down the field. While the running game dictated the tempo, a third down completion from Peyton Manning to Reggie Wayne was the single most important play. Third and five Colts at the New England 33. Big play here. Peyton takes the snap, 
Here comes New England. Pressure stays in. Catch by the Colts. Great catch by Reggie Wayne, and he takes it down to the New England 22-yard line, maybe the 21. First down. He came from the left slot, and then he angled back out away from it. So a little uh, maneuver there that uh, I think foiled the uh, secondary of the Patriots. Well, they're continued with that same rhythm that they had uh, right before the half, and it seems to be igniting this team. Second down goal to go. Just under nine minutes to go. Third quarter, Colts trailing 21 to 6. The give again is to Joseph Adai. Banks it up the middle. Gets down around the one-yard line before he's bent backwards. Third down, goal to go from the one. It's funny about that drive. We got down there to the one-yard line, and I thought back to three years ago, 2003, when we played against the Patriots in that regular season game at home. We got down there to the one-yard line. We ran it three out of four times, didn't get in. 15 seconds to go, the handoff to Edger. He's got it! He is stopped! Willie McGinnis made the stress at the one-yard line! Would you believe it? And I remember talking to Jeff Saturday. He said, hey, Peyton, he said, if we ever get down there again, just sneak it. Just quarterback sneak it. All right, just follow me. Impressive drive starting at their own 24-yard line, and they push the Patriots defense all over the field now. That's 21 to 12. As Vinatieri will try to narrow the gap to eight, which makes it a one-possession game. The snap, the ball's down. Adams' kick is on the way, and good. I remember coming off the field at that point and realizing the adjustments that that their coaches had made. You know, I think, uh, you know, with us with us playing a little bit more man coverage, maybe they went into halftime and said, "All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna run the ball." They just said, "Let's just stick with it. Let's just run it until they stop it." And that entire drive, we weren't able to stop them. The burden now shifted to the Colts' defense. Despite an erratic first half, there were no significant game plan adjustments. This is my execution. We're not going to all of a sudden invent something new at halftime. From a scheme standpoint, you can't change all of a sudden now. You know, we prepared all week. Big series here for the Patriots. Certainly can't have a three and out. Brady needs about three. Takes the snap. Sets up. Looks. Pops. He's going to be hit. Spun away. Throws it out. The flat end. Evans is going to be dropped. And not make the first down. Back at the 25. Three and out. And that's what the defense wanted. That's what they have to do. He checked at the cover two. By doing that, the guy that was going to the flat was running right into a corner. So Brady missed that initial read. Freeney went to his face. He threw it to his last uh, check down to the fullback in the flat. Jason David dives at his knees. Antoine Bethea comes and finished the play. And right there, that was a three and out that we needed to get our offense back the ball and to really get into this game. That defensive series got the energy back in the building. Second possession of the half. They have it at their own 24. Manning waits for the snap from Jeff Saturday. Takes it. Fakes to Dominic Rhodes. Sets up. Throws down the middle. Dallas with a catch at the 45 to midfield. Nice throw, Peyton Manning. Nice catch, Dallas Clark. Bill Belichick does not want to let Reggie Wayne and Marvin Harrison beat them. So we're going to have to beat them with the other guys and make them adjust again. So we came out feeling like we're going to throw the ball down the middle to Dallas Clark against their safeties and linebackers. My presence was missed covering the tight end. And that's where I felt like I excelled. And I've had a lot of success against Dallas Clark. And he's a great young player. But I don't remember him beating me very often. First and 10, Indianapolis at their own 49. Peyton will give it a Rhodes off the right side. Bounces in front. Gets the 40. That's Steve 30. He makes a great move. Just lost his balance, or he might have gone all the way. This guy's killing him, Gino. Well, Dominic Rhodes has always been a dynamite running back. So it's no surprise to me that he is uh, playing the kind of game he's playing. He's a very good running back. Dom came in and really gave us some energy and, and made a run and, and broke some tackles. You just got that psychological lift on the sideline. I was actually a little bit impressed because I didn't think they could. But I think this was the first game where, you know, they really took it upon themselves to maybe play our game a little bit, you know, beat us at our own game. Yeah, boy, they're just moving that defensive line of the Patriots back at this particular time. 
you stop the run, you're a tough team. You're able to run the ball, you're a tough team. And I think they proved to us how tough they have become over the years. Now the Colts trail 21-13, and I wonder if they'd go for a two-point conversion the way they're moving the ball. Oh, I think they would. I believe we're going to score here. Is it too early to go for two? And I was thinking all the way through, well, if you miss it, now you're really still two scores down. Uh, you know, will it ever catch up? It's too early. Let's just keep getting points. And that's the way I'd normally coach. 4.06 to go in the third. Colts trailing by eight. The ball at the New England one-yard line. First down, goal to go. Flacco is the fullback. die is the tailback in the eye on first and goal at the one-yard line. Peyton came to me right before the game, and he said, hey, if they line up in this certain formation, we're going to go to a, uh, a check where it's going to put you in the flat. And uh, sure enough, he called it. I, I didn't think for a second it was going to go to me. Manning looks over the defense, perhaps changing, perhaps not. Now bows under center, Jeff Saturday on first down, and he will fake the ball to a die. Looks for Dan Klecko. He's got it. Touchdown! Colts have scored two one-yard touchdowns here in the third quarter. Patriots once had a 21-6 lead. And they're going for two because Marvin's coming into the game, and so is Reggie. All right, now this is a big play. You go for two. It doesn't kill you if you don't make it, but if you do, it's a tremendous lift. Peyton's still under center. Manning will bring Harrison back in short motion, takes the snap, rolls to the right, fires to the back of the end zone. He got it! Two points! So the Colts have come back from a 15-point deficit to tie it with four minutes left in the third quarter. Big comeback by the Colts now. Even ball game from here on in. And right now the momentum is with the Colts and the physicalness of this ball game is with the Colts. Way to step up, baby! Way to step up, baby! Those Colts have put together back-to-back 76-yard -back drives here in the third quarter to tie the game at 21 all. The Patriots once had a 21-3 lead. Ellis Hobbs back to take the Benetieri kickoff. Adam approaches right to the end of the ball, and he drives a big one. Hobbs about a yard deep. He'll bring it out. 5, 10, 15. Looks for an opening. Cuts to the side. Benetieri can't get him. He's down the sideline. He's got to the 40. He's being run down by Giordano and pushed out of bounds. Deep in Colts territory, and the kickoff got away from him. Wow. We've tied this up. Our defense had just gotten a three and out. We get another good kick, another three and out. We can take the lead, and now all of a sudden they're back down in our red zone. The special teams have a huge breakdown. Boy, talk about taking the wind out of the sails that uh, were full blown for the Indianapolis Colts. We saw a lot of holes, a lot of gaps in their special teams as far as the kickoff return went. As aggressive as they were, and they were very aggressive as far as being physical, getting to the ball, not very sound as far as gaps, not disciplined as far as staying in their lanes. We knew that it would only take one crease, get past one guy, and the rest would kind of fall. It was just deflating. The crowd is going nuts. They feel like they're finally back in this game, and the special teams, which is been a problem in Indianapolis for what seems like 100 years. Once again, let them down, and now Brady's in prime scoring position again, and you're like, oh, here we go. Big third down play coming here. Game tied at 21. Third and goal at the Indianapolis 6. Brady awaiting the shotgun snap. He's got it. Stands in the pocket. Drifts to the right. Looking, 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 looking. Still looking. Fires to the back of the end zone. Caught, but out of bounds, I believe. Let's see what all the officials say. are going to say. was pushed out. Touchdown. Touchdown, Patriots. It's a big call because if it's an incomplete pass, they're going to have to kick a field goal, and we're going to feel really good that, hey, we've dodged this bullet, and we've got a chance to take the lead. But as it turned out, they get the seven, we lose the timeout. It was a big play. Jabbar Gaffney catches a six-yard touchdown pass from Tom Brady. And the Patriots come right back after the Colts had scored 18 unanswered points to tie the game at 21. It's going to be a 60-minute game, one play at a time. All right, we're in this for until the end. So now the Colts have to come back again. 28-21 New England. 
Minute 25 to go in the third. Now they need to go 68 yards and see if we can get another touchdown here and tie this thing up again. Peyton Manning had led the Colts to scores on three consecutive possessions. The game would demand another long drive and another score. Dominic Rhodes remained the feature back. He carried the ball 12 times in the second half for 68 yards. Well, the Colts are ripping off huge chunks of yardage. That'll be the end of the third quarter. When they started really relying on a run, becoming more patient, establishing a run, that's what changed that game. Running the ball, running the ball, our defensive guys started getting a little aggressive, a little too aggressive, a little anxious, and all of a sudden, big plays happen. Manning under center, takes to a dive, drops to throw, sets up, throws one down to Dallas Clark, and Dallas has got it! Nice catch at the 10-yard line is where they'll put it down, and maybe inside of the 9 is where they now put it down. Manning on fire since late in the first half. Welcome to chin strap, folks. I think we're in for a wild finish. Second down, goal to go from the two. Dominic Rhodes, the lone back. 13.36 to go. Plenty of time. Colts at the two and a half yard line to give us to Dominic off the left side. Cuts back right, got right. the goal line, but didn't get in. That's like a fumbled fumble. the football. Fumbled the freaking football as it goes down. You want to talk about a God moment of being in the right place at the right time? That was it. Because there was nothing I did to deserve or be where I was. Dom's going to run it in, and the helmet hits the ball perfectly. And I'm blocking my gun. I remember I turned and looked, and I see the ball shoot out. And then it just hits right beside my feet. I don't know if I'm in the end zone or if I'm not. I have no idea. I was just trying to protect the ball. Where I was sitting, I did not see Rhodes fumble the ball. We, you know, we looked up at the replay and saw it, and uh, much later, of course, I got to hear uh, voice of the Colts, Bob Lamey, his famous, uh, his famous call. He fumbled the freaking football. Fumbled the freaking football. Saturday, a fumble recovery in the end zone for the Colts and the touchdown. That equals what the Patriots got from Logan Mankins in the first quarter. It kind of was poetic justice. You know, they score one where we've actually got it. It goes through our hands, our legs. They score. It's another one where they strip the ball out, should get it, and we end up with a touchdown. So you, you kind of think, well, we're even. It was just an electric moment because you felt the tide begin to turn because that tied the score. We were kind of going back, but you felt like, oh, man, now we're starting to get some breaks. The AFC Championship had now eclipsed all previous games in the Colts-Patriots rivalry. This one was truly special, with a dramatic ending yet to come. The frantic tempo that marked the first 17 minutes of the second half slowed dramatically as the fourth quarter unfolded. The game settled down, the pace less frenzied. Yet the pressure escalated. Each possession, every play magnified as precious time ticked off the clock. Defense played a larger role. Touchdowns were eliminated, replaced by field goals. The end zone. Incomplete, incomplete, it's fourth down. One constant was the Peyton Manning to Dallas Clark connection. Manning again took advantage of the missing Rodney Harrison and attacked the vulnerable middle seam in the Patriots' defensive coverage. In the second half, Clark caught three passes for 100 yards. Fakes to Dominic Rhodes, sets up. Peyton's going to be thrown out. Throws it down. Down the cat. 50, 45, 40. Touch the left. him slip through there and get beyond the safety man kind of surprising I think we tried everybody on Dallas Clark to tell you the truth I mean whether it's a linebacker a safety a defensive back I think uh, at one point in that game there may have been any number of guys trying to cover him and he was still he was still able to convert in critical situations you know that feeling that feeling you know I have a basement you know and, and one day the basement flooded 
and the water was coming in through the window. And what do you do? You can't put a towel. The water is just going to keep on coming and coming and coming. That's the way I felt during that game at points. I mean, it's like we just couldn't stop them at times. The big pass play sets up a possible tying field goal with 5.53 to go. Clock is moving. Benetieri will try this one from 36 yards out. The snap, the ball is down. The kick is on its way. It looks good. It is good. And we got a tie again. 5.31 to go. Colts 31, Patriots 31. Special teams once again disappointed the Colts. Following another long kickoff return by Ellis Hobbs, the Patriots regained the lead with less than four minutes remaining. 43 yards for the rookie, Steven Gustowski. Huge brother. What a football game. It is not over yet. This battle for AFC supremacy would ultimately be decided by the quarterbacks. Tom Brady was a three-time Super Bowl winner. Peyton Manning had not even won an AFC championship. I was very cognizant of, uh, of kind of who I was in, in people's minds. I was very upfront and honest with it. I never tried to hide from the fact. I said, hey, the fact is that we have not won a championship since I've been the quarterback here. He understands the history of the game and where people fall into the history of the game. And I think he understood that, you know, until he was able to get that team to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl, that he would be the greatest player never to win the big one. Down the stretch, if it's coming down to the quarterbacks, and you have Peyton Manning on one side in an AFC championship and Tom Brady in the other, you're going to go with Tom Brady. That belief appeared to be validated when three consecutive Manning incompletions forced a Colts punt. Uh, oh, he knocked it down. That drive hurt there. Yes, nothing. it did. Absolutely nothing. Brady and the Patriots now had the ball with 322 remaining in the fourth quarter and a three-point lead. But an uncharacteristic mistake altered the game's dynamic. They would start the series. They've got to make one first down to win the game. They have too many men in the huddle. Too many players in the huddle on the offense. Five-yard penalty. The Patriots just don't make mistakes like that. They don't have 12 men in the huddle. Two and a half minutes left. Third down and four for the Pats at their own 46-yard line. The markers of Brady's championship career were cool efficiency, exacting precision, flawless execution in the most critical situations. And this was the game's most important play. We kind of felt they wouldn't want to throw the ball outside and go out of bounds. It was going to be an inside play. We call another man coverage. This time we have help on the inside. Bob Sanders is going to play the robber. He's free. He's reading the quarterback's eyes. And if the receiver comes across, he takes him. Third down and four. And it calls for a big defensive play by the Colts. Troy Brown comes into the ball game. And he's the guy you've yeah. got to watch. Now the Colts jumping around a little bit defensively. Brady takes the snap. Pressure coming right up the middle. He throws it. And oh. Bob Sanders almost picked it off, but he knocked it down. When Tom threw the ball, I thought it was going to be a pick for a touchdown. And I'm thinking, we're going to win the game on defense right here. Could have been the play of the game if he would have caught it in return for a touchdown. Sanders read it well and oh. was able to. That was close. Cool. That would have been a touchdown. Yes, that was close. Brady failed to close out his fourth AFC championship. This was now Peyton Manning's moment. A chance to create a lasting memory. This is it. This is where he either becomes the guy who got them to the Super Bowl or the guy who can't win the big one. Is that fair? I don't know. We got what we wanted right here. Let's go, Pete. Let's go. Here we go. We got our money, man, in the money time. Let's go. You sat there and you thought, this is it. This is the crossroads moment. So the Colts have it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. The Patriots lead 34-31. Two minutes and 17 seconds. The Colts have one timeout and the two-minute warning. I remember specifically writing in my notebook, defining drive of Peyton Manning's career. Hey, this is this is what you what you dream for. You know, of course, what you dream for is executing it and scoring the win. Here comes the offense and yeah. give him a chance now. That's all you asked for, and we've got one now. A nail-biter. 
It's been tense. The Patriots once had a 21-3 lead, but could not capitalize to make it more. And now we're in a tough one. 217, Manning out of the shotgun. Peyton takes the snap. Here comes the pressure. He throws to the sideline. Reggie's got it out of bounds. First down at the 31-yard line. First play, throwing out to Reggie Wayne. First down out of bounds. Good start. So the next play, um, Fletcher, who I call him Mr. Suggestion, is what his nickname, because he thinks he should be the offensive coordinator also. He's always got these brilliant ideas of plays. All of them coincidentally feature him as the primary receiver. He says, I can get this guy on a pump route. He, what he wants is an out and up down the middle, middle seam of the field. He runs it instead of about 10 yards. He runs it about five yards. He's way too short. And the linebacker, Alexander, just jams him, just jams the stew out of him. Peyton stays in, throws up the middle. Oh. Incomplete. Boy, that was right in the arms of Brian Fletcher right. and Eric Alexander. Now I'm hot. I'm frustrated. I said, all right. You made the suggestion. I called the play, and now you run a five-yard route instead of a ten-yard route, you know. So he comes back to his credit as opposed to going, all right, I'm sorry, you know, I'm done making suggestions. He goes, I can beat him on a corner route. I'm going, are you kidding me? You're coming back with another idea? It's funny because I kept thinking about some kind of play that would beat that coverage, and the coverage was the same coverage that they made the interception on, where they were showing that safety in the middle of the field and then rolling to Marvin to double coverage. And so Marvin's on the right side, Fletcher and Reggie on the left side, so there is no safety help. We were in that defense, and we just saw Peyton just look up, and it's almost like you could see a flash, a bulb over his head just brighten up, and he just he figured it out. And so all of a sudden, I, you know, I kind of dinged, I went, you know what, this actually is a really, really good idea for him to beat the linebacker on a corner route because there'll be no safety help. Manning out of the shotgun. He stays in. He's going to throw one downfield intended for Brian Fletcher. He's got it. And it. gets out of bounds at the New England 37-yard line. Holy mackerel, what a throw by Peyton Manning. And Brian Fletcher hauls it down at the Patriot 37. Bob, that was a linebacker covering Brian Fletcher, and that's a mismatch in favor of the tight end. It was a huge play. I mean, I'm seeing this guy running wide open down the sideline, and then you see the ball up in the air, and you just hold your breath. You're like, oh, my God. No, not him. You know, anyone else. I mean, you got Dallas Clark. You got Reggie Wayne. Who the heck is Brian Fletcher? It just opened up like the Red Sea. And I thought, oh, my gosh, man, we're going to win this game. There is no doubt it's our game to win right now. So we get up there, and it's funny, he gets out of bounds again. So it's like perfect execution. It's 2.01 to play. Haven't even had to use a timeout. So we huddle up again, call a, a, a little slant route to Reggie. Manning with 2.01 left in the half, waiting for the snap. He can get one play before the two-minute warning. Here comes the blitz. He throws a field call by Reggie to 30. Catches it, breaks a tackle. You know, man, this is good execution right here. And he's running. I'm just kind of going, all right, get, go down, go down, go down, go down. And he's fighting, and he back spins on this guy. And all of a sudden, I see that ball come up in the air. It's just that slow motion that NFL Films always does. But this was live speed. I mean, and Brewski's right there. Samuel's right there. There's like five Patriots right there, and it's just Reggie. At that moment, my heart stopped. I thought the game was going to be over. I thought it's fumble. That ball was up in the air for an hour and a half. You know, it was... It was it was unbelievable. I'm just going. This can't be. This can't be how we're going to lose this game right here. And oh! He caught, oh wow. That ball popped up out of his hands, and Reggie oh. caught it on the way down. He reaches up and grabs it back and pulls it back in. It's just, you know, can you believe it? If you replay that play again, time and time, I don't think that ball would have ever landed right back in Reggie's hands, but he did. And it's one of those tough situations because it almost would be easier if you were down by four because you go, hey, we got four shots to score a touchdown, but it's like I can't be stupid and throw an interception in the end zone and never have the field goal opportunity. Reggie says he can beat the guy on a slant and go. And so Tom you know, says, I like it. So go into the huddle. And Marvin, of all people, says, I think we need to run it. And everybody is, like, dumbfounded. Like, did Marvin just change up from a pass play to a run? I kind of said, you know what, that is a good idea. Let's, let's run it and see what happens. That's where the trust of Peyton, trust in the offensive line and the running backs to get our job done. Uh, 
is, is just so impactful. First and 10 for the Colts at the Patriot 11-yard line. They bring Dallas Clark in short motion to the right. Now they'll give it to a die. Die to the 10. The die drives them down to the 8-yard line. Down to a minute 47 to go. They don't call timeout, which I couldn't believe. I said, hey, you know, we got five yards. Tom calls. He says, we're on the same play again. Second down and five minute and a half to go. Now Manning will give it to a die off the right side. Cuts it back left. Maintains his balance. Drives it down around the three. They call timeout finally. I mean, this is the ultimate conversation. You know, what, you know, what are we going to do? What are they going to do? Tom called a, a running play to be put in just for that game called 12 jab. All right, Manning. At the New England three-yard line, third down and two. 34-31, the Patriots lead. A minute and two seconds remaining in the game. Manning will give it to Joseph right up the middle. He ran right up the middle and scores from the middle left. And the Colts take the lead for the first time in the game. Where did they find a seam like that in that situation? Untouched. This is as big a time as it gets, and we showed up. If there's anything about you that, that when you want something bad enough to be able to impose your will on a defensive line, there, there is no greater feeling because physically you are matching up and you're mashing. It wasn't Peyton. It wasn't fancy. It was just handing the ball off. Your front seven versus our front seven. Who's going to win? You know, and they won. My, my, my. The Indianapolis Colts are one minute away from getting to the Super Bowl. The Patriots are one minute away from having their season end here in the RCA Dome. The Colts lead by four, 38-34, with a minute to go. It's not over. So we score, and it's exciting. But I remember right then, I was looking at the clock, and I said, they still got, you know, two timeouts, and they got over a minute to go, and they got Tom Brady at quarterback. We got a chance. We got a chance to win. Coming from our sideline, we've got the best quarterback on the field. Peyton Manning out there, he's a good one, too. But we like ours better. We like ours better. So uh, the chances are good. And so the Patriots have to go 79 yards in 54 seconds with two timeouts remaining. I've seen this movie before. I've, I've seen this movie a bunch of times. It was, you know, fait accompli. I've seen this before. He's unflappable. We stopped these guys one time, we're going to the Super Bowl. Now, you can do anything one time. You can go whoop a bear one time. Right now, momentum is all on the Colts' side. Come on, defense. Come on, Blue. Brady out of the shotgun. 54 seconds remaining. Crowd deafening. May takes the snap. Brady sets up, steps up in the pocket, throws one down, field incomplete over the head of Troy Brown and short of Richie Caldwell. The odds are very much against the Patriots right now. Second and 10, New England at their own 21. 49 seconds to go. Brady takes the snap. Freeney comes around the corner. Freeney hit it. Ball is his throw, but it's caught. And after the 40-yard line of New England. 42 seconds left. They have two timeouts down to 40 seconds. Ball at the New England 40-yard line, down to 37, down to 36. Now, will Brady spike it? I don't think so. Brady takes the snap, sets up, pressure coming. He throws underneath the Heath Evans. Heath gets into Colts territory, down to the 44. And the Pats call a timeout to stop the clock with 24 seconds remaining. Timeout, New England. Brady has been unbelievable at this in his lifetime. I've never prayed during a game. My hands just sort of kind of just came together on their own. So I'm in ultimate praying position. And I just said, you know, dear Lord, you know, if one time you can just not let Tom make this comeback drive and allow us to win this game of the Super Bowl, that would be a good thing. Amen. You know, probably added in there that Tom's already got three Super Bowl rings and he probably doesn't really need another one at this point. Peyton Manning looking straight down right now. Ball is at the Colts 45, 24 seconds left to go. Brady out of the shotgun again, this crowd warning. Takes the snap, sets up, sets up, throws one over the knee, intercepts it! Marlon Jackson! Marlon's got it! We're going to the Super Bowl! We're going to the Super Bowl! Marlon Jackson with the interception! He picked off Tom Brady! Stay to the down below! Look! What a comeback! What an effort! And what a job! Since 
Brady is known for looking, looking guys off and firing the other way. So kind of blindly throwing some balls sometimes. I try to look off to the right. So as soon as I knew, I knew he was looking to the right. So I just sat. As soon as he went to turn back, I just took off and cut in front of Watson. You didn't expect that to happen. It's like watching the same Bugs Bunny cartoon 37 times in a row and on the 38th time, you know, Bugs Bunny gets run over by a train and dies forever. Well, you can't do it every time. <laughs> the Colts win 38-34. Do you believe it? The Colts are heading to the Super Bowl. I thought it was poetic justice. I always felt it was going to happen that way. If we went, we were going to have to beat New England. We were going to have to exercise those demons. Exercising demons everywhere after an awful first half. I was a little proud of the guy. I was a little proud of Peyton. He had overcome playing the Patriots. He had finally beaten us in a meaningful game, which he hadn't done before. He was now an AFC champion going to the Super Bowl. And I just wanted to let him know that uh, you know, he deserved it because he earned it. He did it the right way. He went out and he freaking earned it. No one gave it to him. Tell me Peyton Manning is not a great quarterback. Uh, that's right. Gee, many Christmas. I'm so sick and tired of hearing that. You could not have written a script better than this. It was uh, the most incredible playoff game uh, that I've had a chance to see firsthand. The Colts are world champions! The Indianapolis Colts defeated the Chicago Bears to win Super Bowl 41. Yet, the far more compelling victory of that special season and the signature game of the Colts-Patriots rivalry was the AFC Championship. It was a reversal of fortune, a contest rich in drama, and significance. I think that game defined it as a rivalry because it's really not a rivalry if it's one-sided. And up until that point, it had been one-sided. When the season was on the line, you know, we were the ones sending them home. How we feel about a playoff victory? Oh, yeah. That game, they turned the tables on us. You know, they're the ones that sent us home. That made it a rivalry because finally, I think America and us as the Patriots also realized that uh, when the game's on the line, you know, Peyton Manning and the Colts could come through and beat us. I remember thinking, man, this must have been a great game to watch. And I, I asked that in my press conference, you know, kind of off camera. I said, well, was this as good a game to watch as I think it was? I couldn't be more prouder. You just got the sense uh, that, man, this had to be special. It's hard to get behind 18 points to a great team and come back and win to do it. You not only have to have great players, but you have to have great character, and we've got that. Everybody called that the Super Bowl game, you know, because you understood what kind of game that was really going to be. And it lived up to every bit of hype. This just sort of brought me back to the old days of, you know, San Francisco and Dallas, or Dallas and Green Bay. Um, you know, it, this is, you know, this is why we watch. A game like that, you have to let settle and ferment a little bit until you realize th this was an epic. The 2006 AFC Championship captured what made this rivalry the best in the NFL. The perfect symmetry on all sides of a conflict. The coach-coach contrast. You have the Christian coach, soft-spoken, everyone loved them to kind of looking at the dark night of the coaching era. Then you have the two best quarterbacks in the league. Peyton Manning transcends the game because he's so smart and he sees it before it happens. Tom Brady is arguably, very easily arguably, the greatest quarterback to ever play. Rarely do you see two teams with that type of talent on the field all at the same time. Just going out there as individuals and just having a sense of it, the win factor. As a winner, your attitude is everything's gonna happen on this field but losing. It's a tie game! Each one of those games means so much. Playing them for, for home field advantage, you're playing them for playoff position, you're playing them for the Super Bowl, for the AFC Championship. At some point, the fans know the Colts are going to meet up with the Patriots somewhere along the line this season, and it's going to be a special game. And uh, I think both sides feel that. In the modern day, in the modern age of football, this is the best uh, rivalry we've got. 
in the four years spanning 2003 to 2006. No rivalry defined the NFL more than the Colts and Patriots. They played seven times during that period, yet no memory lingers more than the 2006 AFC Championship. What an incredible, incredible, incredible performance. 